In this problem, and if you're following along on the review, this is question number 33. Uh, but we're given a rectangle with two diagonals that have been drawn through the rectangle, which have created 12 different angles. Now, we're only given one, and we're asked to find the measures of all the missing angles. Uh, a couple things we need to know before we start working on this. We need to know a few properties. We need to know some properties of the rectangles. We need to know a couple properties of triangles, and we... Uh, I have a couple other things that we've learned along the way that we can use to solve this problem also. Um, first of all, we have to know that rectangles are parallelograms. And since they're parallelograms, their opposite sides are parallel. And when we have a diagonal or a transversal cutting through those parallel sides, then there are going to be some alter alternate interior angles um, created. And we can use that to solve some of these problems. Also, too, we need to know that all rectangles are made up of right angles. So if we look at each one of these vertices, each one of these are 90 degrees. We're going to use that as well. Um, and lastly, about rectangles, we need to know that the diagonals in the rectangles bisect each other, and they are congruent. So from E to G and from H to F, those are the same distance. And since they bisect each other, which, is, which they meet here at this midpoint, that means that all of the parts of these that meet at the midpoint are also congruent. Now, if you'll notice here, since these are congruent, all of these little parts are congruent, by drawing these diagonals, we've created four separate triangles. And once we solve this, we're gonna, we're gonna notice that these opposite side triangles are gonna be congruent to each other. But what we've created is not an ordinary triangle. We've created four isosceles triangles because all of these measurements are the same. All of these triangles have two congruent sides. Those are isosceles triangles. Now, first of all, with triangles, we need to remember that the sum of all interior angles is 180 degrees. And when we're dealing with these interior, or these isosceles triangles, pardon me, um, know that the angles along the bases here that are opposite, the angles opposite the congruent sides, those angles have to be congruent. So these two angles have to be congruent, these two have to be congruent, one and two have to be congruent, and four has to be congruent to this 53 degrees. Also, to solve these ones in the middle, we can use the property that all linear pairs, which means that uh, two angles are side by side creating a line. And if we remember that a line measures 180 degrees. So A to nine, for instance, would be a linear pair. That means that they are supplementary. That means that those two angle measurements must add up to 180 degrees. So we're only given one angle here, which is 53 degrees. But we can use some of these other properties to solve for the missing angles. Uh, and we'll go over a couple of different methods that we can use along the way here. But I'm going to use this isosceles triangle rule here to, to solve for some of these problems first. So since I have this measurement at 53 degrees, which is part of the 90 degrees, by the way, um, in this isosceles triangle here on the left, I know that the, the angles opposite of these congruent sides have to be congruent. So I know, since this is 53, then angle 4 has to be 53 degrees. I also know in E and H, since we have part of the measurement of this whole angle is 53 degrees, these must add up to 90 degrees because this is a right angle here from E to H to G. This is a right angle, 90 degrees. And 4 and 6 then must add up to 90 degrees. And if I take 90 degrees and I subtract what I know, the 53 degrees, then I'll find angle 6 is going to be 27 degrees. Sorry, 37 degrees. <laughs> little math problem there. Well, again, if angle 6 is 37 degrees and we have another isosceles triangle, then angle 7 must also be 37 degrees, which means that 5, since these two add up to 90 degrees, 5 must also be 53 degrees, which is the difference of 90 degrees and the 37 degrees. And we can kind of go around the horn and do the same thing. Since 5 is 53 degrees, these are both the bases of this isosceles triangle. 3 has to be congruent to angle 5, so 3 must also be 53 degrees. Angle 2, since it's the difference of the 90 degree measurement of the full angle EFG, then angle 2 has to be 37 degrees. And angle 1, again, has to be the difference of 90 and 53, which is 37 degrees. 
Now to find these middle ones here, again, remember that all triangles, the angles of the interior, the interior angles, sorry, the sum of all the interior angles in any triangle is going to be 180 degrees. And we have four different triangles here. If we take the two that we know now, for instance, this one on the left here, this triangle on the left, we have two measurements of 53 degrees inside this particular triangle. Those two will add up to 106 degrees. And if I take the 180 degrees of the total of the triangle and subtract the 106 degrees, then angle 9 has to be 74 degrees, which is 180 minus 106. Also, because 8 and 9, as we discussed earlier, are a linear pair, these two have to add up to 180 degrees. And if I take 74 away from 180 degrees, then I'll get 106, which, by the way, is the sum of these interior angles on the opposite side. If you'll remember from triangles, we have the alternate exterior theorem, um, which says that this alternate, or, I'm sorry, this exterior angle theorem, this exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two interior angles on the opposite side added together. So 106 has to equal these two. And now we can kind of check this number with within this triangle to make sure that those all add up to 180 degrees. And if I take the 37 base here, the 37 base angle here, add those together, that's 74. 74 plus 106 is 180 degrees. Inside this, we can also do the same thing we did over here, or we also notice that 9 and 10, since they're across from each other, we know these as vertical angles. So any line that, that crosses each other, any two lines that cross each other, the angles opposite of those, that intersection, are going to be the same measurement. So if 9 is 74 degrees, then 10 has to be 74 degrees. 8 and 11 are also vertical angles. 11 must be 106. And again, if we see within our triangles, these two are 106 added to 74 makes 180 degrees. 37 degrees plus 37 is 74 added to the 106 is also 180 degrees. And you'll know within this triangle, you'll notice that we've created these two congruent triangles on either side of this intersection.